In regards to the mitzvah of eating matzah on the night of Pesach while the Yidin were still in Mitzrayim, the night of Tezvav Nisan, we find something seemingly very surprising. That is, when the Torah is discussing the mitzvah of eating matzah for future generations in Parsha Sur A, the Torah says, Shivas Yomim Toichalol of Matzah, you should eat matzah for seven days, Lechem Oini, we'll see in a moment what Lechem Oini means, because you left Mitzrayim in haste. From this Pasuk we learn that the matzah has to be lechem oini specifically as opposed to matzah ashira. Lechem oini, bread of, a poor bread, which means only flour and water, as opposed to matzah ashira, which would mean flour with other, mixed with other types of juices and liquids. Now, since by Pesach Mitzrayim, the matzah that they had while still being in Mitzrayim, the night before they left, in Parsha's boy, the word lechem oini is not mentioned. It, it, it seems to be implying that at that point, they were allowed to be able, they were able to be yoytze their obligation of eating matzah, even with matzah ashira. Based on this, we can understand that although in future generations, the matzah has to be lechem oini specifically, nevertheless, by Geulas Mitzrayim itself, there is room for matzah ashira. That is, there's the matzah that the Yidin are going to take when they go out of Mitzrayim. Now that matzah was definitely lechem oini, but the matzah that they have before going out of Mitzrayim as a preparation to going out the night before, there is some room for matzah ashira. The Rebbe says, we know that Pesach Mitzrayim is the source, is the root for the Pesach and matzah of future generations. From this is understood that this idea that by Pesach Mitzrayim, as a preparation to Yetzirah Mitzrayim, there is some room for Matzah Ashira, there needs to be something similar to it also in the Pesach of future generations. Where do we see this? It says the Rebbe, it says in the Mordechai, that at the time of the Beis HaMikdash, they would make the whole Seder after the whole meal. That means they would first have the meal, and then they would get to the Seder part of it. And they only ate the matzis mitzvah only after they had filled themselves up with other foods. And, the, and, and, and back then, they actually ate matzo ashira with their regular meal. So that later when they're going to make, so that when they make the hamoitzi, sorry, on the suuda, in the beginning of the suuda, it's not on the matzah, which they're going to be having later by the seder part of it, which was the matzah of the mitzvah of achilas matzah. So first they had matzah ashira during the meal. That's what they made our on. And later they came to eat the matzah, that's the mitzvah. The Rebbe says something similar. We could say even nowadays, even though of course by us we have the seder before the suda, so we actually have the proper matzah by when we wash. But we know that the halacha is that Erev Pesach, before the 10th hour of the day. So although you're not allowed to eat any matzah, but matzo ashira you are allowed to have. Says the Rebbe, from the actual fact that Shulchan Aruch, in other words, Torah, is allowing us, lechatchila, to be eating matzo ashira, that indicates that Erev Pesach, in other words, at the time when we're making the hachonois to Pesach in Yetzirah Mitzrayim, the Torah is giving some room for this concept of matzo ashira. So how are we to understand all of this? The Rebbe says, in regards to the tzivui, to this command of eating lechem oini, the Pasuk says the reason, because you left Mitzrayim in haste, as a result of which the dough didn't manage to rise and to become chametz. Now, since we say that lechem oini is negating not only chametz, we have to have matzah and not chametz, but it's also negating that we can't have matzo ashira, as we said it has to be specifically br the poor bread, not rich bread. So it makes sense then that the words kibichi pozo in yotzosa, that we're having lechem oini because we left in haste, is also the reason why we're not having matzo ashira. So we need to understand. How is kibichi pozo in yotzosa? Why is it that because we left in haste, how is that a reason that we cannot be yotzah the mitzvah with matzo ashira? The Rebbe says, from the very same Pasuk, the earlier part of the Pasuk, starts off with saying, You cannot have Chametz. So speaking about the carbon Pesach. We need to have seven days of Matzos. 
So because we have these two things together, not to eat chametz and to eat matzah, we learn the halacha that the obligation of matzah we can only fulfill with a type of dough that's possible to become chametzdik. We're watching it that it shouldn't become chametzdik, but it has to be of a mixture. The flour or whatever is being mixed with has to be something that it could have technically become chametzdik. And the connection, the reason, why is that the Pasuk, as the Pasuk concludes, ki b'chi pasen yatsasa, because you left in haste. How is that the reason for this halacha? Says the Rebbe, we could say very, very simply. Since Pesach Mitzrayim was a dough that could have become chametz, and it's only, we say, because of the haste that it didn't manage to become chametzdik, so therefore the matzah that we are going to eat as zeicher li yitzias mitzrayim in future generations, also needs to be from a dough that could become chametzdik, and we are going to have to make sure to stop it from becoming chametzdik. We need to guard it not to become chametz, zeicher li yitzias mitzrayim, as a, as a commemoration for this Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, for this aspect of because we left in haste and it wasn't able to become Chametzdik. Says the Rebbe. So now since we have two dinim coming out from this same idea, we have the concept of Matzo Ashiro, of the Matzo, that you're not supposed to have Matzo with, mixed with other liquids. We also have to have, on the other hand, something that could become Chametzdik. And it's for both of them that the Pasuk says the same reason. Ki b'chi in yotzasa, because you left in haste. This tells us that these two types of matzah, again, matzo ashira, and matzah that won't be able to become chametzdik, generally both share the same problem of why we wouldn't be able to fulfill the obligation of matzah with them. So on the one hand, there is a link between these two types of matzah. Again, matzo ashira and matzah that wouldn't even be able to become chametzdik. On the other hand, says the Rebbe, we find that even though in regards to Matzo Ashira, we just said before that this is only a din for future generations of Pesach. But by Pesach Mitzrayim, they technically could have had Matzo Ashira. However, the din that it needs to be a dough that could become Chametzdik, this general din, which is learned in the Yerushalmi from the Pasuk that says, a passage that says in Mitzrayim that Ushmartem es hamatzos, you should guard the matzos, and you can only be, the Yerushalmi learns it out from that passage, that you need to have a matzah that needs to be guarded, means to say that even back then this concept applied. So again, in Pesach Mitzrayim, on the one hand, they were able to be yoitza with matzah ashira, but at the same time, it needs to be a matzah that needs to be guarded not to become chametzdik. Now, the Rebbe also clarifies how that's even possible, because usually juices won't become chametzdik. So the Rebbe says, for example, if you mix in water with the juice, so it's matzah ashira, but it has water, and then it could become chametzdik, and not only that, it actually becomes even chametzdik even quicker. So again, on the one hand, we had these two different halachis coming out from the matzah ashira, and that it needs to be able to become chametzdik. From one, from kibichipazin yotzasa, from the same svarah and for the same reason, and yet by the original Pesach, one of them did apply and one of them didn't apply. They were able to have matzah ashira, but at the same time it has to be a, be a dough that could become chametzdik. To explain all of this, says the Rebbe, Al Pimi will be understood by explaining the difference between lechem oini and matzah ashira in avoida. Lechem oini is a dough that only has flour and water. F- water doesn't have a taste and doesn't give a taste. Matzo Ashira, on the other hand, is a dough that was kneaded with wine, with oil, with honey, or other juices, which give a flavor in the dough. What does this mean in Avoida? Lecha Moini is the Avoida of Kabbalah soil. In other words, without the geschmack, without the enjoyment. What we're saying is, it's even though it's something that you don't have any explanations in your seichel, there's no rationale, and therefore there's no geschmack in these in Yoni Elikos, and nevertheless... He's serving the Abishta because of Kabbalah soil, just accepting the yoke of Hashem. On the other hand, what does Matzo Ashira mean? Matzo Ashira is serving the Abishta with Tam Vadas, with logic, with reason. And therefore, in that sort of avoided, there's going to be more of a taste, a flavor, and a geschmack, an enjoyment. Now, when the avoid of Eid is only with Kabbalah soil, without the geschmack, without the enjoyment, the appreciation of Seichel and Midois, 
So then what it means is that as far as the Seichel and Midas are concerned, there is still a room that he might not be wanting to do this particular Avoida. There is still room for Ra, for evil. It's only because of his Kabbalah soil that he's forcing himself. He's bending the Ra. He's, he's, he's forcing himself to do what's right, to serve the Abishter, which is the Avoida that we call Iskafia. On the other hand, when the Avoida is with Tam Vadas, with the Seichel, with the logic, and done in the most perfect and complete way, that means the Seichel and Midas are completely on board, then the whole ability to do anything against Hashem's will is completely out of the question. There's no room for any Ra, there's no room for evil, because even the person Seichel and Midas are agreeing, are enjoying the Avoida's Hashem. And this is what we call Ishapcha. Says the Rebbe, this we can now see also the connection between the two types of matzah. Matzah Ashira, which is again the matzah that has those juices. And we said it also, there's the concept of things that don't be, even become chametzdik. Because with Pnimi Yisra and Yonim, these two things, one is actually a result of the other. When a person has the avoid of matzah Ashira in the most perfect way, Bishleimus, because his seichel and midas are completely involved in his avoidus Hashem, then automatically it's not able to become chametzdik. Automatically there's no room for ra, there's no room for evil. Just like in the simple sense, matzo ashira, the, the, the flour that's mixed with the oils, again, if it doesn't have any water, but in a regular way, it wouldn't become chametzdik. It's specifically the avoid of lechem oini, the avoid of kabbalah soil, that is leaving some room in a certain sense, for chametz, for ra. In other words, it can become chametzdik. What's happening is, kabola soil, iskafi, I'm bending, I'm forcing the ra, I'm not allowing it to become chametzdik. I'm always guarding the dough, and I'm involved with it, that it shouldn't become chametzdik, but on its own, it would have been able to become chametzdik. Says the Rebbe, these two general types of avoida are really two kinds of gula. There is the Gula of Mitzrayim and there is the Gula of Hasidah. By Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, we know it says, Ki varacham, the nation escaped. Or as we had in the Pasuk, we were just quoting, Chipazin. It was all done in haste. Why was it done that way? Chassidus explains, because the evil, the bad, the klipa inside the Yid was still very, very strong. And therefore, there was a need to run away from the bad, run away from the Tumah of Mitzrayim. That's generally the idea of Lechem Oini. The avoida of Iskafi. I didn't deal, I didn't transform the ra, it's still there. On the other hand, Liyasid Lavoy, the Pasik says, You're not going to go out in haste because there's going to be a situation where there won't be any tomb anymore. Hashem will remove all the impurity from the earth, which is the idea of Ishapcha. This is the idea of Matzo Ashira. Says the Rebbe, now we can understand why Bichi Pazin Yotzasa. We said before that we asked, Why is because you're running out in haste? That's a reason. That there's no matzo ashira. How is that connected? Says the Rebbe says, now we understand why Bhipazin Yatsasa is the reason why on the night of Pesach there's no matzo ashira. And also that it has to be from things that again, um, this this is why on the night of Pesach there can't be matzo ashira and also not from things that can't become Khamadzik. Because what did we say Bechipaz and Yotzasa means? We just explained that a meaning, the reason they're leaving in haste is because the Ra is still very, very strong. And if the Ra is very strong, what's needed? The avoid of Kabbalah soil, the avoid of Iskafia, the avoid of Lechem Oini, specifically. Now, the fact that we can't be Yotzah with Matzo Ashira is not only, nowadays, is not only because it then wouldn't be similar to Geula of Mitzrayim, which the Geula of Mitzrayim was in a way of Kivarachon, the nation escaped, it was the Avoid of Kabbalah soil, the Avoid of Iskafia. But also, because in Lechem Oini, and so too by Geula of Mitzrayim, which as we, in the meantime, it sounded like it was a lower type of Avoid, but really, says the Rebbe, the reason why we're having it now is because there's actually an advantage in the Lechem Oini compared to Matzo Ashira, and there's an advantage in Geula of Mitzrayim even over the Geula of Laosid Lavoi. How is that? Even though it's hapcha, matzo ashira means that the ra, the evil, is completely nullified, but there is still a certain advantage specifically in the avoida of iskafia. Because it's specifically this avoida 
that's connected to the effort of the person, the toil of the person, fighting with the opposition and bending and breaking the Ra. Or to put it in slightly a different way, the idea of this Hapcha is more expressing how the person became completely one with Hashem by refining himself to the extent that he, there's absolutely no room anymore right now for any evil, for any Ra. On the other hand, Iskafia is expresses the concept of bitul, that the person is putting himself completely aside to Hashem and for Hashem. In other words, that even if there's still room for Ra, he's still bending himself, he's breaking himself, he's doing opposite of what his own Mitzis would want and demand, and it's all about, I'm going to do what Hashem wants. Says the Rebbe, this is actually one of the explanations why we say that when Mashiach is going to come, there is still going to be the concept of remembering Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Because the ultimate purpose in Kavana is that we should actually have both Milos. In other words, even when we're holding by the Milo of Ishapcha, the complete purification of the person, absolutely, that there's no room for any Ra anymore, and yet there should still be this Milo of Iskafia as well, like Gulas Mitzrayim. In other words, that the person should have this level of Bitu which is expressed through his effort, through his avoid, through his yigiya, through his toil, and so on. The Rebbe says, the Alter Rebbe tells us in Torah Oir, in regards to Gulas Mitzrayim, Hashem says, I'm going to take you up, and it's a double expression of taking up, two aliyos, which means that it also includes the second aliyah of the Gula Hasida. Therefore, it's understood that just like we say, that the Geulas Mitzrayim is still going to be mentioned. It's still, it's still going to have an impact, even when Mashiach comes by the Geula Asida. The same thing is true the other way around as well. By the Geulas Mitzrayim, it needed to be already felt and sensed. The promise of Hashem, the speech of Hashem, regarding the Geula Asida. How do we understand this? And what's the need for it? What's the purpose? The Rebbe explains... How could we be poiled by ourselves? How could we manage by ourselves? That even when the Ra, when the bad is still full force. And that even after we break ourselves, the Ra is still very strong. Like by Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, we say the Yidin actually had to run away, they had to escape. So how do we still have the strength to fight with the Ra, with the bad, and to win over it? What helps to this is that recognition, the appreciation, the feeling that eventually it's going to lead to the ultimate goal of the Iskafia is going to bring to his Hapchat an absolute complete transformation. And therefore, even before Gaulus Mitzrayim starts, there is already the promise about both Aliyahs, Al Chagam even before Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, we are already aware of the Gaulu Hasida, the ultimate Gaulu. Says the Rebbe, the fact that we mention Gaulu Hasida by Gaulus Mitzrayim, is not only that we're letting you know something that's eventually going to happen, but it actually is in the Sinas Koyach to help the person's avoider right now, currently, presently. That right in the beginning of the avoider by Golas Mitzrayim, there should already be something similar to Golas. It's not only saying this is what's going to happen eventually, but somewhat it's happening right now as well. In other words, there's already Shaykh to be somewhat of that avoider. Now you might ask, if we're only in the beginning of the Avoidah, when the Ra is still so strong, how could we even have anything similar to Geulah Hasida, which is all about Ishapcha, where there's no Ra at all? How could we now be holding there? So the explanation is that even though in the beginning of the Avoidah there is, we're not holding it by this level of completely eradicating, removing the whole concept of Ra, and therefore, yes, the Avoidah is still in a way of a battle, a Mulcham, a Kabbalah soil, as we said before, but nevertheless, this bitul and Kabbalah soil itself needs to be, not only in a way that you're absolutely being forced, but the bitul itself has to somewhat be connected with a person's own mitzvah, meaning to say that even his seichel and his midos should agree, should be maskim to this concept of bitul and Kabbalah soil. In other words, the seichel also understands that we need to have this Kabbalah soil, and then they avoid this Kabbalah soil itself could be with some sort of geshmak. So again, he doesn't have the seichel and the midos per se, but it's, it's a Kabbalah soil. But even the Seichel and the Midas are on board with this Kabbalah soil. So the Rebbe explains what this means is. The Geulu HaAsida, the way it's felt in Geulas Mitzrayim, is not the avoid of Seichel and Midas by itself. Which as we said before, yes, that will eventually bring to Eshap also. But rather, even right now, this is still part of the Eskafi. It's part of the Kabbalah soil of Geulas Mitzrayim. That the Kabbalah soil itself is being done with some level of Tainu. The Rebbe says the same thing 
is also when we speak about Geulas Mitzrayim that's going to be mentioned Lasid Lavi. That in that case, it's the reverse. That Geulas Mitzrayim is a detailed part of Geulah Hasidah. So by Lasid Lavi, it's the other way around. By lo- that what? The main thing is, of course, the Ishapcha, that the person is transformed, that the person is refined completely. But it's not limited only according to his own Mitzrayim, how much he is how much he is elevated and refined, but rather there's also, as we said, there always is remembrance of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. It's going out of his own limitations, there's the idea of Bittl. So just like by Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, we're saying, by Gula Asida, we say the main thing is Gula Asida, but we still remember Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. The same thing over here, what we're saying is by Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the main thing is, of course, the Eskafia, the Bittl. But there's also somewhat of that Geshmak, of that Avoida, of the appreciation for it. It says that, but now we can understand why the matzah that the Yidin eaten Mitzrayim as a preparation for Yetzirah Mitzrayim was able to be matzah ashira on the one hand, but on the other hand, it still needs to be a matzah that needs to be guarded, shouldn't become chametzik. And we said these are two seemingly opposite ideas. And the Rebbe explains. As a result of the Iskalalus, we said that the Geulo Asid is already included in Geulo Mitzrayim. There is room for matzah ashira even in Mitzrayim. In other words, for that appreciation, for that Ishapcha element. But the fact that in Mitzrayim there could be me'ain la'asid, that's only as far as the idea of, ash, uh, of that, that it has that geshmak, the ashira aspect, that Kabbalah's oil itself should have some sort of enjoyment, some sort of pleasure. However, when it comes to the idea that it cannot become chametzdik, the idea of ishapcha, that we can't say applies yet. Because at that time the rise is still there. So therefore, it's still, it's, it's still something that could become chametzdik. We can't apply this idea that it can't become chametzdik. At that point, it, it's specifically a dough that could become chametzdik. Says the Rebbe, but that is all only while the Yidin were still in Mitzrayim. That first night before they went out of Mitzrayim, before the Gula. Where there's some room for the Matzah Ashira. But now that they're going out of Mitzrayim, after the Gula, and so to what we're going to be eating in the future generations, when we eat matzah on the night of Pesach, Zeichel, the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, we say it specifically has to be Lechem Oini, there's no room for matzah Ashira at all. Why not? Says the Rebbe, the explanation is, because what was achieved through Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was that Yidin are no longer servants of Paroi, and right now they're the slaves of Hashem. In other words, at this point, this is the time of Kabbalah, Malchusa Yizbarich, completely accepting Hashem's kingdom. And that comes even before the Kabbalah soil to accept specific commands of Hashem. As Chazal say, first the person needs to be Mekabal on himself, oil Malchus Shamayim, and then he can be Mekabal on himself, oil Mitzvahs. So when we're speaking about the most general point of Kabbalah's oil Malchus Shamayim, here no part of the Mitzvah so the person can be mixed in. Like Chazal tell us, if a person even makes a little bit of a motion, of a hint in front of the king, then there's a punishment, Chas Shalom, of the opposite of life. And therefore, in here you can't have any time, any geshmak of matzah ashira, because Kabbalah's malchus is shalakodesh baruchu, to become avdei Hashem, is purely through lechem oini, absolute bittel.